Gurmat Kankorla. Minister, I want to begin by wishing you every success in your new role, which is a very important role now more than ever to get businesses back up and running and to ensure that as many of our small SMEs survive as possible. And I welcome the opportunity to speak on this very important piece of legislation here today. As we know, micro enterprises really are the beating heart of the local economy. To get that heart pumping again, we must make sure that government and local authorities get back to basics. They must remember that well over 90% of all trade in this state occurs within SMEs and micro enterprises who employ less than 10 employees. Back in, in April, Minister, I asked your predecessor, Minister Humphreys, if she would consider implementing a nationwide shop local campaign in order to encourage people and indeed communities to support their local businesses because there is, as we know, a need now more than ever to ensure that our businesses are adequately supported and that they're helped to every step and made aware indeed of the schemes that exist to ensure their survival. Each year we run the fantastic Tidy Towns competition. It would be great if we had something similar at national level for towns who have contributed the most to bring about a genuine shop local spirit. Minister, as Chair of the Retail Consultation Forum, you will be acutely aware that COVID-19 has brought particular challenges for retailers, both large and small, across this state. And that is why I was somewhat taken aback last week when you announced that the projected gross expenditure for the department in the original estimate was £970.9 million. Of course, that is a lot of money, but as you yourself noted, it only represented an increase of approximately 21 million over the 2019 revised estimates allocation. Are you certain that your department will have enough resources to deal with the scale of the problem that exists for micro enterprises? Just in terms of the bill here before us today, I note that Section 6 seeks to provide that Microfinance Ireland may borrow money from a promotional financial institution, but that aggregate at any one time on, of any borrowings shall not exceed 100 million. Again, 100 million is a significant sum of money, but do, do we really believe that it will be adequate to fulfil the task that lies before us? As government itself has acknowledged, the unprecedented circumstances of the pandemic has resulted in a swiftly evolving landscape for enterprises. This will mean that government must keep supports provided under review and utilise the appropriate mechanisms to adjust and amend the supports and indeed their timeframes accordingly. This is vitally important. We have to create a space in which the voice of local retailers are heard and not just heard but acted upon and as I say everything needs to be done to ensure that they are supported and indeed that they are helped in, in the struggle for their survival. There is an enormous issue of having small businesses lumped with levels of debt that they are going to be unsustainable in the short term and that's something that needs to be looked at it's something that has been said to me by many small businesses that what they don't want is, is debts what they do want is supports we know that from Microfinance Finance Ireland's most recent report that up to the end of December 2019, 346 businesses have failed and this involved 2,085 loans being drawn down. If those were the circumstances in 2019 pre-COVID, we can only anticip anticipate how much worse things are going to be from here on in. It was also recently reported that investors in Irish banks in which the government holds large stakes are nervous about the sector facing high levels of bad loans if it continues to lend to small businesses without the types of credit guarantee schemes that have emerged elsewhere in Europe. Small businesses need guarantees that applying to access funds will not end up being the straw that broke their backs. They will need more than warm words and rhetoric and easy money put before them. They will need assurances that if they try their best to retain employment in local economies, that they will not be punished but supported. And I will end on that note. Gov Market.